everyone, it's Cece here and in today's video I'm answering a question that was sent through from one of my subscribers and it's actually a question that I get asked a lot. The question is, how do I estimate how much macrame cord I'm going to need for my projects? So I've got a few tips and tricks that'll help you with determining how much cord you might need, so let's get straight into them. exactly how much cord to cut for your projects. I really wish that I had some kind of magical rule that would give you exactly the right amount of string every time, but unfortunately it's mostly about trial and error and having experience in making other things where you can pull on that knowledge and use it to guess what you'll need for your projects. Now I've done a little bit of research and it seems that there is this rule going around that if you figure out how long your piece is when it's finished and times that length by eight, then that's how much cord you'll need for your project in terms of the lengths of cord you need to cut. For me, I think that might be a little bit too long. Personally, if I'm using a generic rule, I would times the length of my piece by six and then that gives me a more accurate length and not too much left over. Now, the reason that my length is a little bit shorter might just be because I not quite tight and neatly, and so I could be using less string than other people for their knotting. All right, so here are my six tips on how to more accurately estimate how long to cut each of your cords for any macrame project. My first tip is to look at the style of the piece. So depending on whether the knotting is really tight and kind of a close knit or whether it's more of a loose knotting, kind of a netting look will depend on how much string you're going to need. If you're creating a really loose knotting effect, you're going to need way less string than if you're creating something that's really tightly knotted together. You'll have a lot more square knots and that's going to use up more string. So the first thing to consider is the style and the look of the piece. My second tip is to consider what kind of rope you're using for the project. The thicker the cord, the more you're going to need for each knot. So if you're using a really thin cord, you're going to need less cord to create the same amount of square knots than if you use a really thick, chunky cord. It will also make a difference depending on whether you're using a soft cord or a braided cord. A braided cord tends to hold its shape a little more and therefore use more length for a square knot than if you're using a soft cord, which kind of condenses a bit easier, you can tighten it and so less cords being used. So my third tip, which relates back to the first two tips, is that it's really important to plan out your piece. Even just sitting down for a little bit of time beforehand and drawing it out can really help you with estimating the amount of cord that you're going to need. This relates back to looking at the style, how much knotting you're gonna have in the piece, whether you're gonna use a thick cord or a thin cord, and then bringing all those different elements together so that you kind of have an overall look for your piece and that'll help you estimate the string. Now in regards to planning pieces, some people actually get really specific with it and they have spreadsheets and mathematical equations where they work out exactly what knots they're going to create and then they have a, an idea of how much string each knot uses. So then you can actually calculate exactly how much string you're probably going to need. But I mean, that's just way too complicated for me. I would rather just take a guess and spend more time actually working on my piece than sitting there trying to do the calculations. You can find a few videos online about how to do these spreadsheets and work out how much string you're gonna need. So if you are interested in that way, then I recommend Googling it and you might find some info that's useful. One little trick that I will share with you is if you are doing a wall hanging and you wanna work out how many strings to put across the length of the dowel or stick or whatever you're using, what you need to do first is grab your piece of string and then obviously you're gonna larks head it onto the dowel. So you just get the first one and you do an example. And then if you measure how much distance the lark's head knot takes up on the dowel, you can then work out how many strings you're going to be able to fit across the length of the dowel. Remember that when you are doing your knotting, you're probably going to work in groups of four for your square knots. So it is important that the number of strings that you have across the length of the dowel is divisible by four. 
I also tend to make a lot of diamond shapes where I use either eight strings or 10 strings for the pattern. So in that situation, I also need to make sure that the number of strings I have across the length of my dowel is divisible by either eight or 10. Now my third tip is more to do with plant hangers or items where you're using the same two outside cords as your working cords, not inconsistently. So in this situation, you're going to need to make sure that your inside cords are the short cords that are the length of the finished piece. When your outside two cords are the extra long ones that you're going to continuously be knotting with. The inside ones can be quite short because you're not going to be doing anything with them. They're not getting knotted up inside whatever knots that you're using. And then the outside working cords will be maybe four to six times the length of what your finished piece will be. Here is an example of a pot plant hanger that I've made earlier. And you might be able to see that the strings on the outside come around and they're taking up a lot of length. Whereas the inside cords that are the filler cords, they just sit straight all the way down the piece. So that might give you a better understanding of why the outside cords need to be so much longer than the inside filler cords. Now my fifth tip is to just use tutorials and patterns. When I first started out, I was always looking at different tutorials or finding patterns that I could follow because I just didn't have the knowledge to guess how much string I needed. As I mentioned in the beginning of this video, it is a lot about experience and trial and error. And I mean, it's kind of weird, but I have this like sixth sense now where I can just look at a piece and guess how much string I need. I don't know how I do it, but I just kind of do it now. So you will get to that point eventually. You just have to practice and hopefully it'll become natural for you as well. My sixth and final tip for this video is more is better. So I would rather cut way too much string and then cut the ends and use those leftovers for something different than having to somehow add extra string, which can be done, but I feel like it just always doesn't look as nice. I like a really neat finish, and so adding extra cord is just a no-go for me. You can do so many things with your ends as well. There are really cute projects that you can try, such as little macrame feathers, for example, or I've even just made some really cute Christmas ornaments out of all of the ends that I've had for my previous projects. Let me show you a quick little example with bookmark patterns, which will give you a better idea of how you can look at a pattern to estimate how much string you're going to need. So here I have a bookmark which I'm going to use as my example to demonstrate how much string you will need for a project. And I've measured the finished length of the bookmark and it's about 22 centimeters. Now if you're using my rule of thumb, then you would take that length, 22, and then times it by 6 and that gives you 132 centimeters. So in that situation, I would probably cut my strings to maybe 140 centimeters to be on the safe side. So now let me show you where that rule comes from. So to start, we know that we have strings here that are attached with a lark's head knot to this anchoring point, which is another piece of string. So already we're going to need two times our length there. Now, what I can do is take one length of string and look down the pattern and kind of work out how much string each knot will take. Now, as a bit of a guide for a string this thickness, so between two to four mil, I guess, then each knot will probably use around five centimeters of cord. If you're using something a bit bigger, it might use something more towards the lines of 10 centimeters per knot. Like I said, there are spreadsheets available which do detail this. So if you're interested in the exact numbers, you can go and find them online. So if I count down my line here, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 knots total in that line. So if I times 13 by five, then I'm gonna get a total of 65 centimeters. So that's how much string you're going to need to create those knots. And then also adding another little extra bit for the tassel at the end. So let's say another five centimeters. 
So all up, I'm going to need 70 centimeters to create these knots. Now again, I'm going to times this length by two for the Lark's head knot at the top. And so 70 times two is 140 centimeters. So you can see by that basic breakdown that the rule does work. Now I know how much string I need for this pattern. I've made it before and it is available online for a download if you do wish to make this bookmark yourself at home. But the pattern uses 130 centimeter cords to create this bookmark. So taking that length times by six and it works perfectly. So there you go guys, there's my six tips for how to try and guess how much cord you might need for a project. I hope they do help a little bit. As I said at the start of this video, it is a really hard question to answer and I'm sorry I can't give you a magical rule that will help you with all of your projects. But keep trying, keep using patterns and tutorials and hopefully along the way you'll get more of an idea like I did. Thank you so much for watching and here's to finding our peace and creativity.